Coming up to 8 past 1, Shane Jacobson is in the studio with me. We haven't caught up for a while, but Shane, good afternoon. Good afternoon, mate. Uh, just before we talk about this uh, bit of community work you're doing this week, uh, Top Gear, how's that going? Yeah, great fun. Yeah, getting uh, getting paid to drive other people's cars and other people's insurance, which is uh, on their tyres, so it's, it's good. And travelling the world. Yeah, been uh, been uh, in New Zealand and over in the UK and and sort of all over Australia. So yeah, having a, a lot of fun. And when do we see your work on on screen? Uh, end of September. They're talking. I don't think they've locked a date in, but they're talking end of September this year. What a great experience! Yeah, it is. It's uh, it was the easiest question I've ever answered I think I got a phone call that said uh, look uh, the guys from Top Gear want to talk to you and I said look whatever the question is the answer is yes <laughs> it's, it's, there's a chance I'm going to drive a car uh, there's a chance I'm going to travel uh, I'm a man the answer is yes the fumes that's the not the attractive bit <laughs> um, have you always been a car lover yeah, I've, I'm, I'm a motor enthusiast, but I'm, I'm not what I call a rev head. I've never had a hotted up car as such, but yeah, I've, got, I've got a passion for motor vehicles and I've got a license to drive everything on the road. Ever since I was a kid, I, my dad always said, make sure you're always employable. You know, if you get dropped out of a, an alien spacecraft in any country in the world, you want to make sure you're employable. So as a kid, I just set a target to get every license. I've got motorbike, car, truck, bus, semi, fork, elevated work platform, every form, you know, boat. Jet ski, you name it. Did your father realise you were going to end up in show business where you would probably need those skills from time I, to time? Yeah, well, well it, it, I think that's why he said, make, I said, I want to go into show business. He said, no, just make sure you're employable. That's yeah. not employable. <laughs> you do not go into show business if you haven't got a forklift license. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Unity Walk for Parkinson's disease. Why are you involved with this? Uh, my, my mother has Parkinson's. She was diagnosed eight years ago, and my uncle uh, has Parkinson's as well. He was diagnosed ten years ago. So, um, so your mum's brother? Yeah, it is indeed. Okay. So uh, uh, having said that, a lot of people do ask as soon as I say that whether that means I'm more mm. at risk. But in fact, it probably means statistically I'm less at risk because you know our family's been touched by it twice now and that's quite rare. Um, so it's not something that, 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 that is genetically, it's not passed on. Um, it's just unfortunately we, we won two really bad raffles. And um, So what, what does it mean? I don't know a lot about Parkinson's. So, and for the for listeners who are like me, what does it, what does it mean to your mum and to the family? It's, I mean, Muhammad Ali is the most mm -hmm. obvious, uh, I, I guess, visual trigger point for people. Michael J. Fox? Michael J. Fox, absolutely. So it, it's it's the thing that people obviously attribute to, to the, the people who shake. Um, having said that, you can have Parkinson's without that visual you know, visual uh, identity. So some people shake very little. It can affect their, their facial movements. Um, a thing my mum calls parky face when, you know, it's like Botox sometimes. The, you know, they can get good or bad news and, and it doesn't seem to register on their face. So some people it just limits their facial movements. So it's uh, there, there, there's a person, one person every hour in Australia diagnosed with it. So it's something that affects affects us greatly. Um, and there are in Victoria alone there are 20,000 20, sufferers. Uh, if they are, you know, my mum says she doesn't suffer from it. She just has it. Uh, she's a, a quite a fighting spirit. She, she does it on. gradually get worse, or yes, does it, it sometimes stay in, uh, in a limbo? It can stay in limbo. It, it unfortunately quite often gets worse. Um, and at the moment, there is no cure. So all they can do is treat the symptoms. Um, so the Unity Walk is just to raise awareness. What I'm doing is, is obviously putting my face to it because uh, it means a lot to me. Um, <clears throat> so it is, about, it is about raising funds, and this Unity Walk is just a chance for, for people to get out um, to raise awareness, and, and it's a little 4K, let's call it a stroll rather than a walk. Um, uh, we head off from, uh, from uh, the... Federation Square on Sunday. Uh, registration started at 8.30, but we kick off about 11. And it's just a little 4K stroll, and it's $25 to enter. Um, or people can sponsor somebody. Um, to be quite honest, if, if people didn't have the money and just wanted to come for a walk to help raise awareness, that would be great too. Excellent. It's, um, and what time is it heading off? So about 11, but like I said, I think registration um, <clears throat> is about 8.30, but there's a, a Unity Walk uh, .com.au is where you can register for it. But yeah, it's just, as I say, it's, it's just to raise awareness. It's, it's one of those things where there are more funds needed. Um, it's, uh, it's something that costs a fortune, obviously, research when it comes to the medical world. And uh, quite often the governments can't, can't be expected to pump all the so money. So are there, a, you said a person every hour is diagnosed. Yeah, in Australia. But um, uh, would there, there wouldn't be the numbers of people... Uh, nationally, probably for them to push enormous funds in. No, it's it's between it's estimated between sixty to eighty thousand Australians are affected by it, which it, in my book it's is a big number. A it's a big number, isn't it? But as you say, but you know, by comparison to, to other illness, you know, uh, illnesses, it's probably not the biggest. But uh, by the same token, it, it is affecting a lot of people in a very big way. I know you're not a doctor, but I'm asking doctor type questions. Mm. Does it uh, always? Does it ever strike 
teenagers or young children? It can children? do. The, the, the sad part, yeah, it, it can do. Or is it adults? Um, it's the larger percentage of people affected by it are at a working age. Um, as, as a way of describing them. So, so no, it, it can affect people um, at an early age. It, it absolutely can. It, it tends to be uh, more, uh, I guess, more well-known and more identifiable in the elderly, but it's, it, but it's not, you know, my mum would hate being called elderly, and she's not. She's a very young 70-year-old woman. There you and, go. Uh, but, uh, no, it can, it can definitely affect younger people. Well, I hope it's well-supported. And if anyone's in the mood to do a bit of fundraising this week for... Uh, Parkinson's, uh, the Unity Walk, you could win a fantastic uh, prize as well, which is a uh, trip for the Gold Coast, um, uh, sorry, t t Gold Service trip on the Indian Pacific from Perth to Sydney or Sydney to Perth, thanks to Great Southern Rail, and uh, there are lots of other prizes on offer, as well as the fact that if you just go down and join the walk, yeah. you'll be helping raise awareness. Uh, Shane, I hope it's a huge success Sunday at 11 from Federation Square, but you need to register before the walk, so maybe if you're down there by about 10, and uh, I hope it gets plenty of coverage. Yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. And enjoy Top Gear. Yeah, I will. You spoiled thing, you. You better believe it. Enjoy.